about the second part of the exercise, uh, we have seen that it's not possible to pr produce 2.5 gram per second uh, of steam, uh, so we have set a new value uh, for the objective of, of uh, 1.6 gram uh, per second uh, of steam to be produced. So here we want to uh, size the heat exchanger uh, using uh, given dimensions that are given in the uh, exercise sheet uh, with the, uh, the dimensions of the pipes and also uh, the properties of the metal uh, that will be used uh, for the for the pipes uh, pipe work. Uh, so here. Uh, in order uh, to size the heat exchanger, we need to size uh, separately heat, uh, e each uh, subsection of the heat exchanger uh, because uh, the heat transfer coefficients will be very different uh, if the water is liquid or evaporating or uh, vapor. Uh, so here I'm just showing uh, what we have to do uh, if we consider the section between A uh, to B, so uh, that's uh, the first section for the oil that is entering at 170 degrees, and that's the last section for the water uh, that is entering uh, as a saturated steam uh, or vapor at 100 degrees Celsius, and I just recall that the mass flow rate of water is 1.6 gram per second. And we know that uh, at point A, at the outlet, uh, we need to have water steam uh, at 140 degrees Celsius. So first thing you do, uh, you calculate uh, how much heat is exchanged uh, between the fluids in this section, and it's not complicated to do it with the heat balance on the water side, uh, because you know the inlet and outlet temperature, as well as the mass flow rate, and the properties of the steam, so you calculate uh, here uh, the heat exchange, so uh, I use usually this letter, maybe you use uh, this one uh, for the heat flux, and uh, you calculate with the mass flow rate of water times the Cp of water, be careful, it should be the water in uh, vapor form, uh, multiplied by the difference of temperature uh, of the water across uh, this uh, section, and so that would be 140 minus 100 degrees. So if you calculate, we you have 129 watts uh, for this first section. Once you know the heat flux, uh, you can also do a heat balance of the oil uh, that would be cooled down a little bit in this section in order to know uh, to calculate the outlet temperature of the oil. And if you do this. Uh, so the temperature at point B for the oil uh, is equal to um, uh, 167.8 degrees Celsius. So now you know uh, the heat flux exchange and uh, the temperatures of the inlet and outlet for each of the fluids. Uh, then you do a proper design. Uh, by uh, calculating uh, the uh, global heat transfer coefficient u. Uh, so you can choose to do it either at the outer surface or inner surface uh, of the inner tube. Uh, so if we do it uh, at the uh, outer, uh, uh, at the inner section, then ue would be equal to the sum uh, so the inverse of the sum of three uh, terms, one that corresponds uh, to uh, convective heat transfer at the inner part, so one over uh, H uh, at the water side, uh, and uh, I can say that uh, this is in vapor form because we will we will not have uh, the same heat transfer coefficient when it will be liquid because it will not be the same uh, properties, uh, then uh, you have uh, conductive uh, uh, re resistance uh, for the conduction, uh, radial conduction across uh, the pipe walls uh, that can be written as 
the inner diameter of the inner tube times uh, the logarithm of the difference between the outer uh, diameter by the inner diameter and this you need to divide it by twice uh, by twice, twice the conductivity uh, of the walls that is made of stainless steel and then you need to add the thermal resistance uh, of the outer part so the convection uh, in the oil uh, part and uh, because this is expressed uh, uh, on the inner surface then you need to correct this last term uh, because uh, this convection is applying on the outer section of this tube so you multiply it by uh, the ratio of the um, inner by outer uh, diameter of the inner tube so the idea here uh, is to uh, find what is uh, the heat transfer coefficient uh, of convection in the inner and outer part and for this uh, you calculate uh, the velocity of the flow, uh, the Reynolds of the flow, uh, the Nusselt. Uh, so w with the Reynolds you find it is laminar turbulence. Uh, then uh, you know which uh, good correlation you can use to find the Nusselt. When you have the Nusselt you can calculate this uh, heat transfer coefficient. So you have already done this before. And uh, then you can calculate uh, this uh, global heat transfer coefficient. Once you have it, uh, because you have a contact flow uh, double pipe heat exchanger, you can directly use the LMCG uh, method and you calculate the LMC, uh, the mean uh, temperature difference uh, of, the, um, of both fluids uh, across this section. That's something you can do because you know the temperature of the inlet and outlet for each of the fluids. Uh, and then uh, you use this to calculate uh, the, um, the heat transfer area at the internal part, so AI, and you can use this uh, to calculate uh, then the length uh, that is needed for this section of the double pipe heat exchanger. You do it for each of the section and then uh, you can have the global design uh, for this heat exchanger.